welcome students to this UGC E Patashala session. Today let us learn about the challenges of bibliometric and scientometric studies. We have been studying about bibliometrics and bibliometrics as a method of research has lot of strengths at the same time it also has certain limitations the bibliometric is used as a method of research as it is said that it is arguably the most objective way of analyzing the data. Another advantage of bibliometric method is it can be repeatable. It, repeatability is one of the characteristic of bibliometric studies. You can conduct the experiment and repeat it any number of times and by and large you will get the similar kind of results. Bibliometrics is also attributed to have the quality of being relatively inexpensive in nature. Once you have a good data source, the research can be carried out based on the data source in a relatively inexpensive manner. Bibliometrics can be applied for a small set of data as well as large set of data. Scalability is another advantage of bibliometric method. Another aspect which is normally being highlighted about bibliometric method is it is amenable for comparison. Two different studies can be compared very easily in bibliometric methods. As far as bibliometric indicators are concerned, many indicators are used. Some of them, I mean they may be classified into three major categories. Some of them can be called performance indicators, some of them can be called citation indicators and others are called journal indicators. Bibliometric analysis apart from its strengths has certain limitations too. It is these limitations we are talking in this particular session. Bibliometric analysis is said to have the limitation of carrying out only quantitative analysis ignoring the qualitative analysis. Sometimes bibliometric analysis is criticized for being non-scientific in nature. For example, uh, they argue that H index though it appears quite attractive and simple to compute, some people say that it is not really scientific in nature. The bibliometric analysis differ from discipline to discipline, field to field. This uh, gives a problem for comparison among fields many a times. The changing collaborative research also plays a lot of problem for analysis in bibliometric research. One of the important bibliometric analysis used in used is citation analysis. Citation analysis 
presupposes that there exists a relationship between citing and cited documents. The citation analysis studies the relationship between the cited and citing uh, documents and it is the most widely used uh, bibliometric analysis in the literature. In fact, we are going to study the limitations of the citation analysis in uh, a little more detail now. Challenges of bibliometric and scientometric studies. Dear students, after going through this particular module, it is hoped that you will be able to understand the importance of bibliometric analysis. You will also appreciate the strengths of bibliometrics as a method of research. You will identify the various indicators used in bibliometric studies. You will try to learn and classify the indicators according to their purpose for which they are used and you will appreciate that a number of important qualifications must be borne in mind when assessing the validity of bibliometric analysis. As I said earlier, let us try to understand the limitations of citation analysis. As you are aware, citation analysis is one of the most applied bibliography, uh, bibliometric techniques. Though it is widely used, probably it has received the widest possible criticism also. Let us try to understand the limitations of citation analysis in more detail in the subsequent sections. The citation analysis is based on the assumption that there exists a relationship between cited and citing documents and a citation represents the relationship between them. This is the fundamental principle on which citation analysis is based upon. The citation analysis is the area of bibliometrics which deals with the study of this relationship between the citing and cited references. As a concept, it has been responsible for the development of most of the citation databases such as Thomson and Reuters citation index, Elsevier's, Scopus, Google's, Google Scholar and so on. Citation analysis is the basis for the development of citation indexing is a contribution by Eugene Garfield. Citation indexing is a kind of indexing in which the bibliographic uh, references of documents are made searchable and referred to the documents being indexed. The cited references in a document are made to be a part of, part of the subject access points available for information retrieval. Why do researchers cite is the question many people ask. What is the citer's motivation for referencing earlier works? In fact, these questions have been comprehensively answered by Garfield as early as 1979, the person who originated the idea of uh, citation analysis. He provides a list of 15 reasons for authors to cite earlier works. On examination of these reasons, one may find that some of them are really show a scholarly impact and some of them indicate that they have less than noble intention behind them. It is the second category of reasons which attract the attention of the critics and hampers the very purpose of citation analysis. Citation analysis is based on a few assumptions. I have listed five of them here. The first one is citation of a document implies use of documents by the citing author. Second, citation of documents reflects the merit of that document. Third, citations are made to best possible works. Fourth, a cited document is semantically related in content to the citing document. Fifth, all citations are equal. All these assumptions 
are true, but they have inherent flaws in them. Let us try to briefly understand the criticisms about the uh, about these assumptions. The first assumption that citation of a document implies the use of that document by citing author implies that citing author has either partially or fully used or influenced by the ideas of cited work and secondly that the that all the cited documents were indeed used by the citing author. In fact, this may not be the case always. The sins of omission and commission will lead to the errors in the citation analysis results. These sins will have a negative impact on the fundamental principles on which the citation analysis is based upon. The second criticism is that citation received by a document show its quality. On the face value, one may say that there is a positive correlation between the number of citations received and the quality of that article, but it may not be always true. Sometimes citations are received for wrong reasons as well. It has also been shown by many studies that the authors have the habit of giving citations to spurious works also. This also shakes the very fundamentals of citation analysis. Criticism about the third assumption, studies often show that not all good works are cited. Number of citations among other reasons also depend upon availability or the accessibility of documents to the authors. Accessibility of a document may be a function of its form, place, origin, age and language. Hence, non-availability of documents may have negative impact. The criticism about the fourth assumption has a bearing on the information retrieval uh, function of the citation databases. We cannot say that all the citations in a given document are equal in nature. The sample applies to co-citation as well. The fact that two papers are co-cited does not guarantee the common relationship between their content. This is the criticism about the fourth uh, assumption. Criticism about the fifth assumption is that all citations may not be equal in its importance as far as the citing document is concerned. This might have a negative impact on overall results. The characteristics and limitations of the bibliometric indicators. These bibliometric ind indicators can be categorized for the sake of simplicity into three major categories and I will go by those categories as given by Ren in, uh, in his article in 2007. Let us first take the publication indicators. Many a times number of publications is taken as the bibliometric indicators in many studies. It is the number of publications published either by an author, institute, country uh, or so on. The time span is also taken in many situations to suit the temporal scope. The data is either collected directly from the original publications or from the databases. It is relatively easy to collect the data. Although this count is very straightforward uh, forward, in a uh, forward indicator that can be easily calculated by authors themselves, one must be very careful when using to compare authors or research groups. The disadvantages of this indicator are when use does not, user does not take the size of the analyzed unit and it does not speak the impact of publications counted. The second indicator is number of ISI publication. It is the number of publications indexed by Thomson ISI indices. The disadvantages are when used does not take the size of analyzed unit and has inherent problem of scope and coverage as that of ISI indices and does not count non-ISI publication. The third one is number of publications in top journals. 
it is the number of publications the analyzed unit has published in a selected number of journals during the analyzed time span. The selection of journals is usually made on some criteria. The advantage is that the data is collected from top journal which show their relative importance among others in the group. It is a better count than a mere publication count, but it also has certain limitations. It does not take the size of the analyzed unit into account and has the limitations of selection criteria. Although this approach may look like a performance indicator, it was designed to address the shortcoming of above mentioned quantity indicators. The next category of indicators are citation indicators. Under this category, the first indicator that we are going to take is the number of citation itself. It is the total number of references received from other works. That is number of citations to articles published by an analyzed unit during the analyzed time span. The citation of one article by another is characteristic of scientific publication and it is generally accepted that the number of citations of a particular article receives is a reflection of its impact in the scientific community. The data has to be collected only from citation databases such as Thomson and Reuters Web of Knowledge, Scopus, Google Scholar, CiteSeerX and so on. The limitations of this indicator include it does not take into account older articles as usually are more cited and that are uh, citation rates vary between documents type and subject areas and does not compensate for size of the unit. Field normalized score. This indicator corresponds to relative number of citations to publications from a specific unit compared to world average of citations to the publications of the same document type age and subject area. The limitations of this particular indicator include if the normalization is done on an article level a few highly cited articles in a moderately cited research area may contribute unproportionately to the value of field normalized citation score. But the disadvantage of is that it does not compensate with the size of the analyzed unit. The third indicator category of indicators is journal indicators. Under this category we can have journal normalized citation score. This indicator corresponds to the number of citations to publications from a specific unit during an analyzed time span compared to the world average of citations to publications of the same types, ages and in the same journal. And the calculation is as follows. The number of citations to each of the unit's publication is normalized by dividing it with world's average of citations to publications of the same document type published in the same year in the same journal. The indicator is the mean value of all the normalized citation counts for the unit's publication. Similarly, the Center for uh, Science and Technology Studies has come out with crown indicators, some researchers use them also. One of the popular indicator is H index. The H index is an index that attempts to measure both the scientific productivity and the apparent scientific impact of a scientist. It was developed by J. E. Hirsch in 2005. He defines H index like this. A scientist has a index of H of his or her NP papers have at least H citation each and the other NP minus H papers have at most H citations each. The web of science and other citation databases they give direct access to H index nowadays and this is becoming quite popular. Another index which has caught the attention of researchers is uncitedness. It is the share of the unit's publication that 
remain unsighted after a, a certain time period. It requires the data to calculate unsightedness one may require data from a comprehensive citation databases such as Thomson and Reuters. Self citation is another indicator used normally by the researchers and the calculation of cite citation in citation is as follows. Count the total number of uh, citation to the units publications during the analyzed time span. Check where citations are coming from and count the number of such unit itself. Divide the second number with the first to get the share of self citedness. The requirement for getting the self citation is that it requires data from a comprehensive citation database. Let us try to understand the journal indicators. Impact factor is one of the most popular indicators. The impact factor of a of an academic journal is a measure reflecting the average number of citations to recent articles published in the journal and intended to gauge the importance of a journal in its given field. It is perceived that higher the impact factor of a journal more important it is in that field than those with lower ones. The impact factor was devised marginally by Eugene Garfield, the founder of uh, ISI. Impact factor is calculated yearly for those journals that are indexed by indexed in the journal of, uh, journal citation reports JCR. Impact factors are available in the science citation index, journal citation uh, reports and the web of knowledge for more than 8000 selected scientific journals. The impact factor does have several limitations. First, although if a higher impact factor can suggest a greater impact of a journal, it does not reflect the quality of each journal, each particular article published by that journal. Consequently, it is not clear whether a high impact factor is due to a moderate degree of citations of all articles published or to a high degree of citations of only some articles. In order to come out with uh, come out with the limitations of the journal impact factor, normalized journal impact factor has been developed. This indicator corresponds to the relative number of citations to publications in one specific journal compared to world's average of citations. Normalized journal impact factor has been developed. This indicator corresponds to the relative number of citations to publications in one specific journal compared to world's average of citations. Immediacy index is an indicator which measures the current importance of work published by a journal by calculating the average number of times article published during a particular year by, by a specific journal is cited over the course of that over the course of that same year. The immediacy index is useful for identifying the journals publishing the articles in the emerging areas. It is said that immediacy index has an unintended bias towards articles published in earlier part of the year as they would have better and more chance to get cited than those articles published later in this uh, in the year. Another not so widely used indicator is journal to field impact score. Let us try to conclude what we have learnt in this session. Bibliometrics is a important method for data collection and data analysis. Bibliometric indicators are many and varied in nature. Bibliometric indicators can be categorized into three major groups and all these 
indicators have their own strengths and weaknesses as well. The literature shows that many indicators are used heavily than the others. One has to be very careful in selecting the indicators and the selection of indicators also depends upon the data source that you may have. Citation analysis is one of the important method used in the literature for the past six to seven decades. Citation analysis is a very strong method for analyzing the publications. At the same time, it has certain limitations as well. Citation analysis has limitations because it has in some inherent assumptions. Some of the critics have questioned these assumptions themselves. By and large, what we can say is that though bibliometric and citation indicators do have certain limitations, we can always use them with care. If one uses them with caution, we can arrive at a good analysis and bibliometrics can be used as a most effective and most objective method of analyzing the scholarly communication. Bibliometric analysis is nowadays applied even for web resources. We are going to study about that in the next session.